This is Life Rewired, the Brain Injury Podcast, for survivors, by survivors. And now your host, Rob and Ashley. Hi, I'm Rob, and this is Life Rewired. Today, joining me is Janet Shane. Hello, Janet. Hello, Rob. I want to say thank you. Thank you for this opportunity, because I love I love having an opportunity to share. Thank you so much. Um, we were talking before the podcast. I think we could have talked all night, really. <laughs> I think we probably could have. We just could have went back and forth sharing. Yes, and I think we've made a new friendship. And I'm so thankful for that. Well, I am thankful to you for reaching out to me on Facebook because, to be very honest with you, I don't accept a lot of men's requests. But I thought, mm, I need to check this out. And then I saw that you were a survivor, a traumatic brain injury survivor. And I went, mm, I'm going to send a message. And so, and then God took it from there. Yeah, he really did. And I don't usually send a lot of friend requests out anyway. And See, it was divinely done. Yeah, and... <laughs> And it was just one of those moments where I don't remember what you had posted on Facebook, but I was like, I would, I like to be friends with this person because she seems like really interesting and we're in the same support group. That's how I saw it. And I'm, mm -hmm. I just sent your request and here we are. <laughs> yep. And I, I, I'm, I, I say it the way it is. I, I'm, I'm honest and as a friend, I told her after I met her, she, we had done, you know, some story, um, stories, you know, live videos or whatever. And, and she's like, this lady is exactly who you see. She like what you see on the videos, that's who she is. And I was like, that was like the biggest compliment, like you ever could have gave me. Yeah. And that, I, like, it almost made me cry. <laughs> You know, because you try, but are you? And and I, I always thought I was, but you know, to have someone actually testify it is like a whole nother level. So yeah, that's like really good validation to know that people recognize in you that you don't have a two sides to you. you that's the best way you should be is you know what you see is what you get. No agenda. Yeah, exactly. No exactly. agenda, but God's agenda. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I couldn't agree more. <laughs> well, Janet, I want to hear your story. We that's the one thing we didn't talk about is I'd love I'd love to hear your story how you survived your brain injury or and well, how you got your brain injury first. <laughs> okay. Well, I was 20 years old. I had just completed my second year at the Ohio State University um being a music education major. And I needed education credits, so I was going to work for the OSU Daycare Center. And with that, I needed a tuberculosis check. And my cousin, that is doubly related, like my mom and his dad were brother and sister, and his dad and my mom are brother and sisters. He would do it for free. And so, you know, you do what you can do free when you're in college. Oh, so yeah. <laughs> so I, w I was going up to him, and I was driving on US 23. And I was three minutes south of the highway patrol and there was a young lady that was driving a really big car called, I think a Parisian or something. Hmm. And I was in a little Chevette or shove it as my husband would call it. Um, and she, at that moment in time, she had her car full of kids. It was a hot summer day. She reached back to hit her boyfriend that had been pulling on her hair for a long time. But at that moment, that's when she did it. And she went through the grass meeting strip, went airborne, and went basically on top of my car. Oh, my. But my now husband was my boyfriend at the time, and he was with me in his injuries. And I, I had gone into fetal position. So we think neither one of us remember the accident. Even though he never had a head injury, he, he went into shock, and he doesn't remember it. Wow. Um, that's just God's protection because he should be all rights, but God doesn't. Yeah. It's been 31 years and he can't remember and I'm not going to ever force that, mm -hmm. but, um, he had bracing injuries and orthopedically. And I literally 
went into fetal position, brought my legs up when I got scared, which was good because the bottom of the car was even to the top of my seat. I wouldn't have any legs. Oh, wow. And I was instantaneously thrown into a coma. And the, the driver ahead of me, he saw her coming and he sped up. And we were three minutes south of the highway patrol. He went to the highway patrol. He said there was a bad accident. I didn't see it, but I know there was a bad accident. You need to get help there now. And within seven to, I want to say seven, five to seven or five to 10 minutes, they had, they had, um, you know, EMS on the, on site and helicopters and they used the jaws of life to get me out. And, um, there was somebody, Fred, the one thing Fred does remember is, is that there was somebody between him and I at all times. Like they did not let him see how I was. And, um, they took him to the Ohio State University Hospital and they took me to Grant Hospital. And, um, being told I was, I sat in their operating room for a lot of hours because they didn't know if I was going to live or if I was going to die. And, um, they didn't want to bring me into surgery. I was losing a lot of blood and they didn't know where it was from, but they didn't want to do anything because they didn't know. So they gave me a pint of blood and then they eventually did take me into surgery and here my liver had been severed and they, they don't have to fix it. <laughs> so they did like this huge <laughs> incision on me, which I'm glad they did, but it wasn't necessary because all I did was shut me up and put, give me blood. And it, and it healed itself. <laughs> so, <laughs> but it's just a characteristic mark and it, you know, it is what it is. And I was in a coma for four days and the neurologist or the neural psych, neurosurgeon, whoever it was, um, he knew I was a musician. And so he's like, we need to play music around the clock. And so it was close enough to when classes had ended, all my friends that were still in town and all the professors, everybody was coming down to the hospital, was bringing them music, things I had played, anything to help jog my memory to, to bring me back. And, um, and I eventually came out, but you know, it's not like you wake up and like, Oh, hello, how are you? It's, <laughs> I mean, I don't even know. I, I don't know exactly when I really start, you know, I have some funky dreams. Like I remember seeing some dinosaurs from the Jurassic park, which is back in the nineties, <laughs> um, the movie and some purple cows. And then I remember like I had to go to the restroom and I, and I evidently was trying to get out of bed, but I, I remember pushing up and I, I had hurt my wrist, but oh, that's wow. all I remember from the first hospital. But I was on life support for two weeks and my mom kept begging Give her one more day to breathe. Give her one more day to breathe. Give her one more day to breathe. And eventually I did, and I never ended up getting a trach. And, and I've been told by my friends that if you were not positive, you were not allowed in the room. My mother would not let you in. If you couldn't hold it together, then you were not allowed in. Because she wanted to surround me with nothing but love and prayers and positivity. And my one college friend now has faith more than she ever did. She was a Catholic girl and went to Catholic school. But my parents showed her what true faith meant. And now she has been more of a believer ever since. And also my high school friend, when she came up, she knew it was me because my head was big, but it was still my nose. <laughs> so, and then I got, I had, they, the neurosurgeon had given my parents a choice of three places in the United States because I was only 20 years old and he wanted to give me the, the best chance he could because they didn't really expect me to ever get beyond the nursing home like to ever really function well ever again. Wow. And the lifelike nurse had said she had picked me up on her birthday and she was wondering if she had done my parents a disservice by bringing me in. And I said, well, 
I'm here. <laughs> She's like, I know, and I don't understand it. <laughs> but um, they could either take me to Pen a place in Pennsylvania, a place in Georgia, or the Ohio State University. Well, that was a no-brainer. I live in Ohio, and I was at the Ohio State University, so my mama stayed at my apartment and had her car broken into the first night or two. Oh, and no. so I was freaking out because she wasn't coming, and I didn't understand, and da 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 but but I was there. I was at Dodd Hall back in those days. You could do inpatient rehab. And the, the girl that had hit me, God bless them, they um, had an umbrella clause, a million-dollar umbrella clause. So I was not limited on the amount of therapy I could receive. And I was there for seven weeks in a day. And then I came home, and I did three months of outpatient rehab at Dayton at the local hospital and um it was an hour drive and i would go down on monday and then on monday night i would stay with my sister that lived halfway there and then on tuesday then my sister would take me down and i'd spend the night again and then on wednesday my mom would pick me up and she would take me down and then we would come back home and then thursday friday saturday sunday i would do my own therapy at home and i did that for three months and i went to to that outpatient rehab and i left dodd saying I'm going back to school in January. And they're like, we'll see. And I'm like, no, I'm going back to school in January. I went back to school in January. How I ever did it, looking back on it now, no clue. Okay. Because <laughs> I was sleeping 12 hour nights and taking two or three, three hour naps. Mm -hmm. I, to, to just heal. And it was winter in Columbus, and that's not a good way. It's harsh. And I remember yeah. calling my mom one day. I fell, and she's like, are you okay? And I'm like, yeah, just my pride's broke. But it's okay, Mom. You know, and, and life was good. I mean, I made the best of everything. And also when I was in that inpatient rehab, The first memory from there, I, they gave me my shower and I was in that wheelchair that's like a toilet seat and I knew what they were doing, but I knew I couldn't do it. Hmm. And I knew I was 20 years old. They left my room. I was sitting in my wheelchair and I was looking out the window. And I just started to cry. I'm like, Jesus, God, this is not okay. This is not okay. I know what they were doing. And I know I can't do that. And I'm 20 years old. I am going to get my degree. I am going to get married. And I am going to have children. Do you understand me? This is non-negotiable. This is exactly what's got to happen. And from that day forth, I had to be able to do one thing physically, whether it was try a new food or, you know, do something at therapy or every day. And it was literally one little thing every day. Maybe and when I went to bed, I thanked God for helping me get my degree. Mm -hmm. Thank you for helping me to get married. And thank you for helping give me children. And I never questioned it. I prayed from June of 93 and I got married in 97 and I literally did it every day. And now that I knowing what I know now, that was really the law of attraction that God had given me because I was clear about what I didn't want. And I was really clear about what I did want and I took action to achieve it. And I just entrusted it and gave it to the Lord. That's what it takes. Yes. And then as time went on, that first Easter, I started to realize I, on Good Friday, the way the church was, I had been there. How the lights were dim. And then I started to realize that I saw that I had seen the tunnel. I had gone through the tunnel. I had been at heaven. And then I 
I can remember it <laughs> like it was happened just a bit ago. I was really tired. I was like, oh, I'm tired. Jesus went, you're going to be okay. And I went, oh, okay. And so that is why I am here. I know that if Jesus hadn't told me at that exact moment, I wouldn't be here. Hmm. I don't know if that was in the split seconds of the, I don't, I don't know. I don't know the science. I will never know. But I know without any doubt, if I had to give my life up to the truth of that story, I would give my life up because I know I would not be here if Jesus hadn't told me I was going to be okay. Mm. You came too far to turn back. I wasn't meant to stay there. And it, mm -hmm. it was glory, the unconditional love that is there would squish this world. Mm. It's, it's, I wish I could describe it. It's just, it's the purest and the warmest. The sun times a hundred mm. or a thousand. I mean, it's just, it's glorious. And I, what I also have taken a vow to be childlike to my last breath. And I wondered why, why do I, why do I want to be a child at heart? A child loves unconditionally. Hmm. They don't know how not to love. They're taught by the world how not to love. And so that's how I will be childlike to the day I go home to see Jesus because I want to share that with others. I love that. That is beautiful. I can see that in you too. And when I get giggly, it's fun. I am a big kid at heart. I like literally like I last week I went to Chicago and my a mentor is came from Australia and she had given us this plastic rubber cup and I could hear there was something in it. And I was like, Oh, there's something in here. And so I'm like, I take off the lid and I was, I started to laugh like, Oh my goodness, golly gee. And like, people were like, what's up? I was like, check inside the cup. <laughs> They're like, what? I'm like, it had these little kangaroos that say, I love Australia. And they were keychains. And oh my God, I, it just filled my heart. <laughs> <laughs> because I got, I got a little piece of Australia. <laughs> I've never been there. I don't know if I'll ever make it there, but I have a little piece of Australia. I have a kangaroo. Actually, I have two. <laughs> that is cool. <laughs> That's my goal too. I'm gonna to get to Australia one day. Will I ever make it there? Probably not. But no, 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 no. <laughs> you just say I. You decide where you want to go. Then you take a plan of putting a little bit back, and you entrust it to God, and God will take care of it. I just need to get a, a boat that'll go there. <laughs> no, don't. No house. Just let God take care of it. God will just put it out. I want to make it to Australia. I want to see John. And oh. I have two other friends that I don't remember their names at the top of my head, but <laughs> everything right. happens for a reason at yes. its appointed time. I agree with you. That that <laughs> definitely is right. That is the quote that I have in the second book that I I showed you earlier that I wrote my chapter in. And I am claiming that quote because I looked it up and I did not find that anyone else has ever said it. Everything happens for a reason at its appointed time. I totally believe that. If you just look around you, the, the signs are there everywhere. Yep. I've heard countless stories of, I wouldn't have been doing this if it hadn't been for that. 
Yeah. Yes. Now, with with what had happened to me, I mean, I didn't go into great detail of, but I did, like most of us, I had to relearn how to basically do everything. Yeah. And the did biggest you... wake up was, is when I went back to college after those six months, I sat in class and I knew I was supposed to be taking notes, but I didn't know how to take notes. And then I couldn't take true and false. I couldn't take multiple choice. All I could do was sit down and tell you what I knew. Thank God I had a professor that knew my therapist <laughs> and was willing to work with her. <laughs> and he made special accommodations. Now, did you end up with any type of lingering side effects after your uh, injury? Like for me, I have headaches around the clock. I fortunately, um, the big, there are things that people don't know. Um, I can't look down with my eyes very well like I just tilt my head because the the effort that it takes to make my eyes go down isn't worth it like when I'm driving like a quick tilt totally is safer than me trying to because I used to try to make my eyes go and I gave that up a long time ago because it's just not worth it. And then it was funny. I was talking to my son and, and then I said, yeah, I can't look up and to the right or the whatever. And he's like, you're right. Like your eyes go like this. <laughs> and I'm like, but I'm looking at it. <laughs> <laughs> I just find it so strange how there's so many, even though brain injury comes with a lot of negative, there's a lot of weird things you can't explain that comes with it as well. Yeah. With like I can literally be looking... Also, my reticulator activating system it does not always pay attention, but I can be looking at something, and just because I'm looking at it doesn't mean that I'm really processing what I'm looking at. Because Fred will be like, it's right there in front of me. I'm like, where? Like, huh? I don't see it. And like, <laughs> I literally, that. I... Because my brain is not taking in that process, the process of that item being there. Or if I think it's in a certain spot, I won't find it because I think it's here and it's not really there. It's the, it's over there. Mm -hmm. The hardest is out in nature. I love it. But they'll be like, oh, there's it. And I'm like, where? And it's usually gone. <laughs> but every once in a while, I'll, I will catch it. And so then I'm like, Doo -doo. <laughs> those are those are pride moments and then also my left side i was paralyzed i had been par totally paralyzed and um i'm not sure why but i i have full rain i have full movement on my left side but it is weaker like with cooking and that i've i've had to learn how to like spoon things out instead of holding the pan <laughs> yeah you know. I learn how to adjust. For me, I I used to, I played by ear the piano, and before my injury, I could only play in the key of B flat. Mm. Now I can play in B flat, C, and F. Excellent. Who knows why? <laughs> There's a reason beyond your knowledge, is what I'm going to say. <laughs> And then there's weird things like I can't drive next to a train. It's not because it's like a fear or a phobia, but it it literally makes me sick to my stomach because of that movement mm. next to me. I can't do it. I've got to pull yeah. over. <laughs> I'm I'm I don't have any of that. Like Yeah, I I mean I had headaches at one and they were labeled post traumatic headaches. You know, and I took medicine for a while and stress would definitely make it worse. Mm. Um, but I don't really, I don't get those. I don't, I don't, and I don't have any seizure activity, so I don't have to take any medicine. And, um, but in June I found out that it, I had bone on bone in my hip and I didn't know that. And, um, and then after that, then I also found out that, um, I have lymphedema and lipedema. 
in my legs and that's where the pain is and as long as i wear compression wear and i get and i put on my space pants every night to to get the fluid out of my legs they they literally look like space pants okay (laughs) my aunt has that she calls it her legs she was like i gotta put my legs on (laughs) i call it my space pants (laughs) so (laughs) it's a cooler term i'm an 80s girl <laughs> but um yeah i i have so i had that to live with so you know but it sucks but it is what it is and you know what if i can if i can walk without pain because i put some compression leggings on my legs yeah now you know my husband says you know for business that that doesn't look right and so maybe i need to get some like pantyhose that are so you know for the compression or whatever so it'll look more i don't know i don't live the house a whole lot but um i also googled well how you get these things to look professional so i'm getting some black ones okay (laughs) and maybe it'll look legit i don't know (laughs) so it's all good (laughs) <laughs> that's cool you're so fun i tell you i'm really thankful that our paths crossed so am i you are exactly what i was seeing too okay for your fyi because i am i'm 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 really picky you have to have multiple things in your in your feed for me to know that you're legit and not a bot and i and I and then I started to look in the group, and I was like, okay, no. And he has he had a podcast, and I love guesting. Okay, I don't own my own podcast yet. Yet is the key word, but um, I enjoy doing them. But I have to say, this is the first one that I'm not getting all sweaty armpits. So thank you. Well, <laughs> you're 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 easy to talk to. Thank you. <laughs> a lot of people have said that, and I, I'm just me. <laughs> That's, that's the only well, thing God I can bless say. you. You are beautiful. <laughs> and I'll, I will say that you're a welcome guest anytime. And I forgot to, at the very beginning, I forgot to say Ashley is not here. And I want people to know that Ashley is okay. Everything is fine. She's got some issues going on. And she will be here when she can. But she wants me to continue going forward so that we can continue bringing content out weekly to you guys. Because that's the most important thing is that we want to be an encouragement to other people who are going through this. There's so many people that, like myself, when I started my my journey, I didn't know where to go for help. I didn't know where to look for encouragement. And that's the big reason why we want to do this. So Also, now there are resources because let me tell you, in 93, there weren't. No, because I don't know how you would have found stuff in back then. They gave my parents a, th- a big, thick book like this, and the biggest, and the bet. I didn't say this. I got to give dibs on this real quick here. One of the first days, like probably that second day that I was at Dodd Hall, I remember sitting in one area, and my mom looked at me and she said, Janet, you can do anything you used to be able to do. You do just need to teach a new part of your brain to do it Mm. well that gave me the license to become who i am today because if you were going to tell me i couldn't do it well then i was it may not be good but i was going to prove you wrong because you don't tell me what i can't do because my mama told me i could do anything i wanted to and then out of all this also is is i got to have the privilege to prepare both my mom and my dad to go see Jesus. And I got to tell her about that unconditional love that I experienced. And I got to thank her for being Jesus's little messenger girl. Love it. And to be able to prepare your chair, your parents to go see the Lord. And we all got, they died the way they wanted we were all, all my siblings were together. We were around them, both of them. Was a gift that I didn't know that I needed 
or wanted. But it sure made it better <laughs> in the best way that it could. Oh, absolutely. Yes. It wasn't easy. It's still not easy. But I love it when my mom's in my head. And I know it's my mom. And if and when I start to hear it, I'm like, I always I always call upon Jesus because I've learned that there are things that can go on in this head and I need to keep myself safe. And so I always call upon Jesus and I'm like, if this isn't from you, then take it away. Mm. And he'll listen. And my cousin, that's a deacon, said that it was that that was the thing to do and the priest. So it came from two people. So it's legit. Yeah. <laughs> and they don't know each other. <laughs> <laughs> Well, this and has been Ashley, I don't know you. I didn't get to meet you, but I, whatever's going on, I am a prayer girl. I will hold you in my prayers. And when I go to light a candle every week, next week, your name will be on the envelope and I will hold you in prayer. Thank you so much for that. Ashley will really appreciate that. Well, She's really going through it right now. And I'm not going to disclose what, what it is. I'll tell no, you no, off, no, no, I, we'll no. We'll talk offline. She won't mind. Yeah. But, um, yeah, she just, I pray for the world because the world needs it. Yeah. Not just America, the whole world. We all need it. So. Oh, absolutely. Now more than ever. Yep. Yes. Um, it has been such a thrill talking with you today. And I'm going to have you back again next week. So we're going to, next week, we're going to discuss, remind me because I've already forgotten. <laughs> Whatever you, you said, it was my choice. Oh, that's right. <laughs> But I thought we decided, but I can't remember what it was. But we're gonna. I find think out. It, it it'll just it'll just be you know like this craziness that God has put on my heart to do. Yes. <laughs> and to achieve, and how I can serve others. Okay, good. So we're going to close out, and I'm going to try to be Ashley today. Ashley <laughs> Ashley always closes us out, and I always forget the YouTube stuff. So uh, like, subscribe, and whatever the youtube things are so just do all those and we'll see you on the next episode bye, -bye.